Now I've been a professional photographer for the last 20 years. I was a semi-professional photographer for 10 years before that. And for the years before that, from being a teenager, I've always had a camera in my hand. So I think I've got a fair idea of how to take a photograph and what makes a photograph work. I like to think I do anyway. Thought I'd pass on a few little tips for budding street photographers out there. You might find a few of these tips coming quite handy for you. Straight off the bat, I'll get the obvious one out of the way. Don't go out there shooting homeless people. They've got their own issues. They don't need you and your camera. However well-intentioned you are, they don't need you going out there and uh, adding to their issues. I think I've only shot two, oh Jesus. Personally, from memory, I've only ever shot a couple of homeless folk. One intentionally, one unintentionally. The intentional shot was about maybe 15 years ago up in Auckland. Nothing going on at all, just people walking about, doing their own thing, just milling about. Nothing stood out at me. And then just as I walked past this group of fellas, one of them leant out to pass his mate something, probably a cigarette or something. But I instinctively picked the camera up and took the shot. It doesn't need me interfering in his life. That's, that's the way I feel about that photograph. Uh, the other photograph was a few years ago in Christchurch. Again, same sort of thing. The city was dead, there was nobody about, nothing happening. And I started photographing some of the street murals. And I thought, as soon as somebody walks around the corner, I'll get them in the shot, just to put the mural in context, really, nothing more than that. And this guy walked around the corner. Before I had a chance, literally before I had a chance to take the photograph, he, he just launched into me. I mean, he went off, he went off big time at me, ranting and raving at me, all this malarkey. And I, I, I said to him, I says, mate, I says, I've not photo I'm, I'm photographing the mural there. I've not even got the photograph. I tried to show him on the back of the camera that there was nothing there but he was having none of it. He was uh, clearly having a bad day and uh, I just added to his added to his woes, unfortunately. Some of the shopkeepers came out of the shops because nothing else is happening and a bit noisy, what's all the commotion? And uh, they sort of all stared at me like I'm, uh, like I'm just a twat, you know? I'll try not to be, but you know, everybody's got their issues, haven't they? I suppose, myself included. So yeah, just, just leave the homeless guys alone. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not worth doing really isn't. Print out some business cards with your details on your number, your name, your website if you've got one, your Facebook, whatever. And just if anybody does challenge you, just hand them the card and say, mate, I'm legitimate street photographer. It's, I'm not doing anything dodgy. Here's my contact details. It just gives you that air of legitimacy. Man, this is crazy out here. Whew. Find local events, you know, be it concerts, uh, street festivals, markets, anything, anything where there's a gathering of people. And as such, it makes photography so much easier, it really does. Go to tourist areas, you know. Go to local landmarks, local cities where there's a lot of tourists knocking about. Everybody's got a camera. Everybody's taking photographs. You aren't gonna stand out at all by doing what you're doing. Well, people are doing what they're doing. And it just makes for a more pleasant experience. Now, one thing I personally enjoy doing is photographing protests, demonstrations, that sort of thing. I like to get in amongst the protesters get as close as I can. I use a 28mm lens these days. The majority of the protesters will be fine. They're out there promoting their cause. So you out there with your camera, it's kind of promoting their cause. So uh, go for it. If you disagree with the protest and it's not your cup of tea, don't let people know that. As an individual, you've got your own personal view on things. As a photographer, a documentary photographer, a photojournalist, your views don't go into it. What you're there to do is make photographs and tell the story as best as you can without letting your personal bias come into it. And if your personal bias does start coming into things, the protesters are gonna suss you out pretty quick smart and you're gonna get ejected from the protest at the very least, at the very worst. Who knows, these days, some pretty passionate people out there. So yeah, shoot demonstrations and protests, but just be a bit careful. Now here's quite an important tip that I try to do, and I, and I can't do it myself. While you're walking about on the street, try and have a bit of a smile on your face. Don't walk about with a face like me. I've got a face like a, a restless twat face, one of them miserable bulldog faces. And uh, I, I try and smile a bit, you know what I mean? Try and be a bit happier while you're out there shooting. You're doing nothing wrong. You're just documenting life on the streets. One guy I suggest you're watching is, a, is an Australian guy. I'll put a link below. He photographs out of Melbourne. We, he wears a hat with street photographer written on his hat and as he pops shots off, he's telling people, it's okay, street photographer, just doing my job, just working out here. And everybody passes by and I don't think I've ever seen him in any conflict whatsoever. It's just a good channel to watch for a bit of motivation. I'll put the, uh, I'll put the link below. Now I would highly suggest using smaller cameras and wider lenses for your street photography and documentary photography. People are obviously a lot less aware of you when you've got a small camera in your hand. If you've got a big, all singing, all dancing, DSLR with a 70 to 200 
f2.8 lens and you're shooting from across the street it looks a little bit iffy disarm people by using a small camera small lens just walking along just doing your thing now shooting from the hip a lot of people say it's sneaky it looks dodgy and it can look dodgy and it can be sneaky but it gets results there's no denying that i'm quite low on stature anyway so uh, i'm lower to the ground than most normal people so normal people shooting from the hip is me shooting from the eye level i start my day shooting from the hip just to get my confidence up a little bit get a few photographs under the belt and then i start getting a bit more confident pick the camera up to the eye or lift it above my head sometimes even just to get a higher angle and just just mix it up a bit some from the hip some from the eye some above the head just go for different angles and you make different photographs now confrontation it's going to happen without a shadow of a doubt it's going to happen to you the more time you spend shooting street photography it, it's going to happen somebody's going to see you somebody's going to take umbrage to what you're doing and they're going to challenge you and that is never a pleasant experience it's only happened to me a couple of times this could get uncomfortable as well whoa wait whoa 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 man, 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 man. the other time i got challenged another early morning the sun was just coming up i'm walking down towards the ocean everything was silhouetted to me and one guy was walking across he got sort of long flowing shaggy hair big beard that sort of malarkey i couldn't see his face just the outline of him because obviously he's silhouetted and i thought man that makes a nice photograph with the sun sort of streaking through now and i did take a photograph a real quick photograph that was it and i just carried on walking and he just spun on his heels and went off at me i mean absolutely did you take my photograph i says yeah mate he says, why? I says, well, I'm a street photographer. I'm just out here, mate. I says, and to be honest, I says, it's a cracking photograph. And he said, delete it, delete it now. I says, mate, I says, uh, let me show you the photograph, mate. There's nothing dodgy about it. I says, to be honest, I said, look, you can't even see yourself. It's a silhouette, you can't see. He says, you delete that now. He wasn't as polite as that. He, uh, he gave me a real serve. You know, I could have stood there and argued my point and, and said, look, I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm a street photographer. I'm well within my rights to photograph anybody out in public within reason. Could have argued the point, but I didn't. I thought, mate, it's not worth the hassle. It's not a great shot, really. So I just deleted it in front of him. You can argue till the cows come home. Just be the better person and, and just, just delete the photograph when requested. Simple. Now, on that point, no fucking way. Fucking mate, that was close. Try to avoid photographing anybody and everybody. Try to be a bit more disciplined. Look for moments, interactions, connections, same as interactions, uh, gestures. Just try and look for something a little bit out of the ordinary. It's so easy these days to walk down the street, photograph 100 people, stood on a street corner, drinking a coffee, talking on the phone, texting, whatever. It's easy, it's low hanging fruit, it's generally uninteresting. You know, I always try and look for a bit of emotion or a bit of, you know, connection like I say. But maybe six months ago, I joined a Facebook group called the Street Photography Club. Very, very good stuff on there, really good stuff. It's, I think it's a private group actually. So once you're on there, you put your stuff on and you sign up for criticism. Some of these guys are pretty, I wouldn't say brutal, but you know, they're, they're honest. You know, some of their critiques are very honest. When I joined, I put my first photograph on there. It was, a, it was a shot I took down on the wharf, some people fishing there. I did ask these people for a portrait. It was in nice light and I thought, that's quite a nice photograph, that. I'll stick it on there. Watch the, uh, watch the thumbs up and the heart emojis and the well done Paul, slapping on the back. You're the greatest thing since Leeds United scored in a winning goal in the championship. I expected the plaudits. It's got a few, don't get me wrong, I've got a few. But there's one guy in particular, he came on, he said, he said basically to the words of the effect is, yeah, so what, it's a, it's a portrait. You know, nice light, fair enough. What does it offer? What does it, what does it tell the viewer? Uh, there's no gesture, there's no moment, there's no fleeting, passing glimpse of anything. It's just a, just a photograph. And I thought, you know what? He's right, he's absolutely spot on. Uh, and that actually changed, or not changed, but that kicked me into gear to start looking again for photographs that have a little bit of meaning. Uh, it's fine to get the portraits, the street portraits, that's fine. But something with a little bit extra has far more impact. And that's what I try to do. So unless the guy holding his coffee or the girl holding a phone, unless they're doing something that you've not seen before, don't bother taking it. You can take it, actually. Take it just to get your confidence up and just get your, a few photographs under your belt until you're feeling comfortable. And then uh, stop taking them pictures because they're too easy really and uh, everybody's seen them before just look you might spend all day looking for something and, and and actually getting nothing but then a photograph will sort of present itself you'll take it and if you do get it man it makes all the hours the endless hours of nothingness walking pounding the streets 
it makes all that go away and it makes you want to get up there get out again because you know there's photographs to be made if you look hard enough case in point when i was down in wellington a few months ago i walked about 22 23k that day i was absolutely shattered i got a handful of photographs that i liked but there's one photograph in particular and it was just a pure fluke some girl running down the street i spun round right time i clicked off three frames two of them were crap the third one oh, oh, my shot of the day possibly shot of the year actually i really like it last bit of advice whatever you want to call it the more you shoot the better you will get and the better your photographs will get now, it's obvious the more you're out on the streets photographing people walking the streets even if you don't take a picture that day just to be out there in amongst it observing people observing places observing potential and things will improve exponentially in my humble opinion i think that'll do for the tips i'm gonna get my infrared camera out now take a few photographs even if there's one of you out there that thinks oh that's not a bad idea i'll implement that i'm happy all right until next time thanks for watching take it easy happy hunting